Hi, Chris here with a little bit of a tutorial for a change. Several years ago, when I decided to strap on one of those cheap Chinese high power laser diodes to my CNC router, I ran into the problem of feeding this contraption with G-code. While there were a few solutions to generate working G-code, none of those were fitting to my workflow particularly well. So I started creating my own tool based on a quite complex Inkscape extension called G-Code Tools. While G-Code Tools is intended to be used for simple CNC cutting operations, my tool is optimized to generate efficient tool paths for laser engraving and cutting. Quite a few changes, adaptions and simplifications, as well as a few months later, this tool proved to be a real time saver for me. So I open sourced it in case of any of you are in need of such a tool. In the following minutes I'll walk you through my workflow using this tool. So let's start off. The first thing we need to do is to install the extension. You can get the necessary files right from GitHub. Just google Inkscape laser tools and it should pop right up. You can find some additional information in the readme file, so make sure you give that a look if you run into any problems. Next, we download the whole thing as a zip file. After that, we just need to copy the content of the folder v0.9x if you're using Inkscape 0.9 or v1.x if you use Inkscape 1 or above to your extensions folder. The location of that folder varies depending on OS, Inkscape version and installation. The best way to check your specific folder location is directly in the Inkscape preferences. After copying the content of the folder into the extensions folder and the restart of Inkscape, you should be able to see an entry called Laser Tools in your extensions dropdown. So far, so good. Next, we'll start to prepare our design. If you're not drawing up the design from scratch, chances are you will start from one or more JPEG files. In order for them to work with laser tools, we need to turn them into paths. This step creates a vectorized representation of our picture. For this demonstration, I took my logo. As you can see, it is possible to use colored source material. This works fine for simple graphics, but it can be tricky to get nice results on more complex ones. Vectorizing a JPEG in Inkscape is pretty easy using the trace bitmap function. It is located under the path tab. This function provides you with a range of options in order to trace your source material. Most of the time, doing a simple brightness cutoff will give a decent result. We just need to set the threshold according to our graphics and if necessary adjust the optimization settings. Just use the preview and modify until you get a good representation of your source material. That looks fine to me. Now we can get rid of the original and place the path on the canvas. Generally it is better to convert your graphics first and then rescale or modify it since vector graphics do not lose sharpness when modifying. When using laser tools the origin is always fixed to the bottom left corner. Therefore I tend to resize the canvas to the intended size of the engraving. That can be done in the document properties. While here we make sure all our units are set to millimeters and the scale is defined as 1. Otherwise, we might end up with over or undersized engravings. We place our graphics where it is intended to go and we are golden in terms of preparation. Here the line tools can come in handy. If we work with text or other Inkscape objects, which are not paths, we need to convert them into paths before we generate the G-code for the machine. Otherwise, laser tools will ignore the shapes and texts, as you can see in this test. You can simply check if an object is a path by double-clicking the object. If the object is a path, you should see a bunch of nodes. 
Now we open the laser tools plugin we just installed. Before we can convert our design into G code, we need to define a few things. First, we need to specify the instructions for turning the laser on and off. In my setup, I used the spindle speed command to control my laser. In this case, S100 is equal to 100% laser power and S1 is equal to off. Laser tools allows for different laser on instructions for perimeter and infill. In combination with the respective speeds, we have fine control over the appearance of our engraving. Since I use a relative low power laser diode, I just leave the laser power on 100% all the time and set the speeds according to the workpiece. Next, we need to specify the laser diameter. That value basically defines the spacing between the infill paths. If you use a very low power laser or you want to control the discoloration on the edges of your engraving, you may want to do several passes. Also, for cutting operations, it is handy to select the number of passes. On thicker material, it also may be necessary to feed the C-axis down a few tenths in order to keep the focus point of your laser close to the place where you actually do the cutting. But for this simple tutorial, we won't need to bother with these last two values. That leaves us with just a few more settings. For one, we have to decide if we want to do only contours or contours and infill or just infill. For engravings on wood, I recommend going with both, since just doing the infill will leave you with tiny steps in the outline of your graphics. Doing the parameter afterwards will clean these imperfections up quite nicely and you will end up with a clean edge. The last thing we need to do is to specify the output directory and the name of the G-code file. When defining the file name, we need to make sure that the extension fits the file format your machine expects. In my case, it needs to be a .ngc. In the Preferences tab, you can set further options. The most important ones are the Contour Tolerance, which basically defines how small the linear segment should be your shape will be split up into. One or two tenths of a millimeter should be enough for most applications. The other two important options are the Prefix and Suffix G-Code. This provides you with three lines of specific G-Code which laser tools puts in front or at the end of your generated G-code. Here we can specify machine and application specific stuff like using relative or absolute coordinates, activating the laser or shutting down the machine at the end. The other options in this menu are what I would consider advanced options. Feel free to try them out if this software works for you. With everything set up according to our machine, we can start the export of our G-code. Depending on the size of your project, the generation can take a few minutes, so just give it some time. But that should not be a problem for our small example here. After generating the G-code file, we end up with a preview of our engraving moves on top of our design. This toolpath seems to be just fine. The exported text file will look a little something like this. As an additional check for our G-code, we could put it into a simulator or use a viewer like NC Viewer and have a look at it there. No problems to be seen here either, so we can send the file off to the machine. In my case, the machine is the cheapest halfway viable CNC router I could come up with. But provided the right configuration, the generated G-code should run on pretty much everything. Mark free, Linux CNC, a 3D printer of your choosing, you name it. All of those are basically G-code interpreters. That worked a treat. While the extension does what I use it for pretty well, there is certainly a lot of room for improvement. So if you have a different use case or ideas for optimizations, 
feel free to contribute to the codebase over on GitHub and or leave some feedback. Thanks for watching.